me. You know I don't do intros. Let's just get right into this shit. All right, so the King's Gambit. We have e4, e5, and then the move f4 in this position. Apparently, it's only played about 6% of the time here. Let me know if you knew it was that low. I feel like I see it a lot more often than that. Overall, a very dangerous opening for white. If you don't know what you're doing here, there is a high likelihood that you will fall into some kind of trap, especially if you accept the gambit. And that's why it is very important to know what you're doing here. The move I am going to recommend is not the most common, e takes f4. It's not knight to c6. It's not d6 either. It is the fourth most common move played 9% of the time with the highest scoring stat for black, d5. Now, you still need to know what to do from here, and the line I'm going to recommend is not any kind of main line at all. I highly doubt you have ever seen this line. Now, first things first, there is a couple different moves you will see from white. Just a side note, the move f takes e5 immediately loses the game, queen h4, and you can figure out why this is totally winning yourself. If you need to know more, you can check it out with the engine or look up any video named the Falkbeer Counter Gambit. You can see the name there on the right side of the screen in blue. So aside from that, there's also the move knight f3 here, played 22% of the time. That will likely be the last line I cover in this video, so stick around for that. The main move you will be seeing here is the move e takes d5. Now once again, you can continue with normal Falkbeer counter gambit ideas. You can play e4, you can play e takes d4, you could even play queen takes d5, which is really bad. But once again, I'm not recommending any of the top three most common moves. I'm going to recommend move number 4 here, played 5% of the time, c6. Again, we are giving white the opportunity to take our e-pawn and immediately lose the game once again after queen h5. So before we move on, I just want to make sure you all understand this correctly. White played the move e4, we played e5, and then white gambited upon with f4. We declined the gambit and we counter gambited with the move d5. They accepted our counter gambit and then we gambited again with c6. At this moment, after we play c6, this particular gambit is known as the Nimzovich Marshall Counter Gambit. And it is already scoring fantastic with a 58% win rate for black. Again, white has some other moves like knight to f3 that I will cover later, but for now we're just going to stick to the main line of d takes c6. So at this point, your opponent might see this gambit maybe 1-2% to of the time when playing a king's gambit. You know, there's a chance that they've seen this before, and 89% of people are taking this pawn on c6. But once again, we are diverting from the main line, and I'm going to recommend the move bishop c5. At this point, it is virtually guaranteed that your opponent has never seen anything like this before, and if you are booked up here and they are not, it is going to be a bad day for them. This is known as the pickler gambit, by the way. Alright, so there are three main moves that white plays with any regularity here. And one of them is f takes e5, which immediately loses. Of course, we just go queen h4 check. If something like king e2, it's just mate in one. And if they play g3, we just straight up win a rook. White can kind of try to trap your queen in the corner here by playing knight f3 here. We just play knight takes c6 here though. We're trying to play knight to d4. If we do, that's going to force some kind of trade with the knight, and then we're just going to free our queen. So most people play c3 here to stop that, but then just bishop g4, and we're actually winning this knight now. Alright, so there's only three main moves to look at here, and one of them completely loses. That leaves knight f3, and c takes b7. We respond with e4 here, and we are asking some questions. I'll start with a couple of the rarer moves first, and then go backwards. Uh, if knight g5 here, we have a pretty interesting continuation. We want to play knight takes c6, get one of our pawns back. Now we're only down one pawn for this kind of compensation. The most popular move here loses, knight takes e4, we play queen e7, f4 is coming on the next turn, so 87% of people are playing queen e2, but then knight to d4, and it's plus 5, or minus 5, I guess, plus 5 for us. Alright, so let's say they don't lose, and they play the only other common move here, bishop to c4, attacking f7. Well, we don't really need to give a damn, we just want to play the move knight to f6. And, I mean, there are just some ridiculous lines here. For example, after knight takes f7, we actually want to go queen to b6, not queen to d4, because queen e7 kind of holds everything together. So queen to b6, threatening something like that. I don't know exactly what we're threatening. But what I do know is that there's only been four games from this position, and in two of them, white took our rook on h8. Now we can play bishop to g4, which nearly traps this queen. Now I don't know how many people here would realize that they actually need to give away their queen. I mean, they do have the move bishop e2 available to them. But I'm going to turn this engine off, and after bishop e2... I want you to find out why it's minus 13. 
Now, seriously, I don't know if I've ever even seen this idea in a puzzle before. The move to completely win the game on the spot right now is bishop to g1. I mean, that's just incredible. Black cannot do anything here. It's actually minus 31. Oh, now it's mating 14? Yeah, 14. Not that you'll ever get this in a game, but that's a sick fucking tactic. And just a quick note going back to this position, I don't want to cover this too much in depth because this is a very rare line, but instead of knight takes f7, white also can play bishop takes f7. Here we want to play king e7, and now our threat is to play h3, which is going to move this knight off the defense of this bishop, and then we're going to win it. Which is why the most common move here is to play bishop back to b3, but uh-oh, your queen is trapped. So that was a couple variations after knight to g5. I'll also look at some stuff after queen to e2. This brings forth a very interesting line, where I really like the engine suggestion, which is knight to e7. This allows white to win our e-pawn, and most people are taking it with their queen. We want to play knight takes c6, and at this point we are down two pawns, but the engine thinks we are better. Black has to walk a crazy kind of tightrope to not completely lose here. I mean, they are at least three moves away from castling, they know they're never going to castle this side. And after some of the most common stuff, bishop to b5, it's immediately minus two. We castle, get our king out of danger, and <laughs> look at the stats for the top three moves. Yeah, it's bad. The engine move is king to d1, which was played twice, surprisingly. Now, there's a lot of different lines here. Too many to look at, if I'm being honest. But if, if you're good enough to get to this position and remember all this stuff, you're probably good enough to win the game from here. I mean, look at these top played moves, like d4, minus four. Uh, c3, minus two and a half. Bishop takes c6, minus 3. We just kind of get general compensation here, where it is just extremely easy for us to develop. White has to walk a tightrope if they want to even try to hang on. And, I mean, just look at the development of this queen side. White is basically playing down 11 points of material here. Alright, so now we are getting on to some of the more main stuff. We looked at move number 4 and 3, knight g5, queen e2. The second most common move here is d4. A very common move in these kinds of positions. However, in this case, it loses. Now, this is a wild fucking line, so hang on to your asses for me, okay? We play the move e takes f3, and 93% of people are taking our bishop on c5. Now we have a very nice idea of playing f2 check. Of course, if the king takes, they lose their queen. And if they play king e2, well, they lose their queen. However, it's not quite as cut and dry as you might think, because... White still has this threat of taking on b7, so after king takes f2, we do take the queen, and they do actually win our rook. We need to play knight to c6 here, getting it into a strong position to leap into the middle of the board, and then of course they should take our rook and th promote to anything, we're just going to take it. Now you can see we are still completely winning here. Black does have some compensation for their queen, but it is not enough to justify an entire queen being gone. Also, this king is just in a really bad spot, and they have literally no pieces developed at all. This should be a pretty routine victory from here, but I will show what happens after the most common line. Two out of three times, white played bishop to b5 here. They're not really threatening anything here because it's defended, but they are threatening our bishop, so we need to bring that to either g4 or h5. And now, pretty much regardless of what they do, even if they give us a check, we're just going to play knight to e2, we're going to castle, and we're going to have a great fucking game. Alright, so now we are on to the main gambit stuff. We looked at knight g5 here, we looked at queen e2, we looked at d4, which all just are super unpleasant for white to try to play. The move they should make here is knight to e5, which is the most common move, played 39% of the time. And now we want to continue with knight takes c6. And, I mean, just before moving on, these stats are fantastic. I mean, how many openings do you play where, after the most common stuff, black is winning 61% of the time? White has a few choices here. First, I'll look at these bishop moves, bishop c4 and bishop b5. Um, they both actually play pretty similarly because there's one main trap that they are going to fall into the majority of the time. Here, white is threatening some kind of fork with knight takes c6, pawn takes, and then bishop takes, winning the rook. We don't actually need to worry about any of that though, and we can just play this engine move knight to f6, winning 71% of the time with black. This invites white to do that exact tactic, and 70% of people are playing at knight takes c6. We take back with the pawn, and 100% of people take this back. Now bishop d7, 91% of people are taking our rook and losing their queen. 
Similarly, a lot of people are playing the move bishop to c4 here, threatening this f7 pawn, and once again, we don't care. We just play knight to f6, and if they take it with either piece, they're virtually lost. If knight takes, we get that same absolutely nasty line from earlier, where we play queen to b6, most people are taking our rook, and then we play bishop to g4 check. There's only one block to avoid losing the queen, which is bishop to e2, and then bishop to g1, threatening mate on the next turn, it's over. And if bishop takes, which is the engine move, we play king to f8, and I mean look at the stats for the top two moves. The most common move is bishop to b3, which we take the knight, they take back, and then bishop g4 wins the queen again. White is also playing knight takes c6 here, we take back, and now once again the most common move is bishop b3, losing the queen. If they play something like bishop to c4, we get one of the weirdest engine lines that I have ever seen. I'm going to turn the engine off right here, and the move for black to play here is bishop to g4. Now this is something I just don't think a human could ever see in a million years. White needs to play bishop to e2 to protect their queen, and now, how do you continue the attack here? You could play queen to d4, but then just rook f8 and they're fine. You could maybe play e3, but then your bishop's hanging, so no. It's like, what could you possibly do here to continue the attack? Something like king f7, way too slow. The engine is a nasty bitch. The engine is recommending bishop to h3 here. And then it's like, okay, what's the point of that? Pawn takes. Now, knight to g4. What the fuck? The point is they cannot take with either piece or it's mate in two. And I mean, let's just turn this engine on. It's, it's minus two here. We're still winning. The engine line is d4. And this is some crazy shit. You're not ready. Queen h4 check. Okay, king d2. e3 e3 can't take it if you go to d3 you get forked and you lose your queen so king to c3 knight f2 anyways uh, queen to what f1 queen to f1 and now now queen to d8 i mean i'm just hoping here that other people find this shit as funny as me i, I know i'm never going to get this in a game but this is still crazy uh, just looking at it from a human perspective i'm like okay we don't want them to take that that's going to be bad so what could we do here maybe bishop takes e3 it's mate if by some miracle you actually get this line in a game, you owe me money or something. So we've looked at a couple of these bishop moves, nothing really to fear there, we're generally better. Um, the most common move is knight takes c6, and we need to take back with the pawn. And I mean, we're just better here. Uh, you can kind of go down any single line, the next move we're going to play is knight to f6, and from there, it's going to be very very difficult to survive, as long as you can remember knight f6. Uh, for example, bishop c4. Not scoring so well, but if you play knight f6, it's scoring even worse. After the most common stuff, something like knight to c3, we can castle. We just have an amazing position. We may want to go knight to g4 at some point, but actually most likely we're probably going to play bishop to g4. Our king is castled, theirs is not. They still cannot develop really any of their queen side. I mean, I don't know what more you want from a game. But... Now, right here, after bishop c4 and knight f6, you might have seen this move d4, which scores well for white. That's because the majority of people are just allowing their queen to get traded off here, which is not good. That's not what we want. We want to play the move queen to b6 here, avoid the queen trade, and we really don't need to worry about any checks here. For example, queen to e2. We can play king to d8. <laughs> that is coming. If they want to try to get fancy and say, oh, well, I'm going to take your f-pawn and now you can't check my queen. Well, yeah, I can because I'm just going to play rook f8 and now if you move your bishop anywhere, I'm either going to take it or I'm just going to go rook e8 immediately and you lose. Just know that if you see a line that looks good for white in this opening, it's probably completely lost. Alright, so let's go back a little bit. After knight to e5, remember we need to take the pawn on c6. The most common move is to take. We take back with the pawn. And we just looked at some stuff after bishop to c4. The most common move here is knight to c3. And we are going to respond with knight f6. Remember knight f6 against pretty much anything in this position, you're going to be fine. Alright, so let's follow some of the most common stuff from here. We've got d3, played 29% of the time, immediately losing. We're going to play queen to d4. There's really not anything they can do about this. 95% of people are playing queen to e2. Now we hit them with bishop g4. Uh, queen d2 seems to be the best move, and then e takes d3. This king is not going anywhere anytime soon, and we literally just have enough time to castle, play rook e1, and win the game that way. A game going forward might look something like this. Bishop takes d3. 
we castle and then maybe h3 uh, i don't know what else to do now rook f to e8 king f1 <laughs> bishop e2 check and now now it's sad they have to take with the queen if they take with anything else it's main one and last but not least after we play e4 we've looked at knight to g5 we've looked at knight to e5 we've looked at d4 we've looked at queen to e2 the engine move is the fifth most common move played seven percent of the time here c takes b7 right now and we are still just fine with this. We are down two pawns, but I feel like these bishops provide a lot of compensation for them. This isn't like the Danish where Daniel Narditsky already showed how to refute it. This is just straight up good. Absolutely nobody with white is going to know what they're doing here. And if you want a deeper look into this specific line, the C takes B7 line, check out this video by FM William Grave. Once again, I'm having to plug another FM William Grave video because that's simply where I learn all my gambits. So, of course, sub to him if you haven't yet. Alright, so at this point in the video, we've pretty much covered everything that happens after the most common move, knight to f3 here. We also know that the move f takes e5 loses here, so the only real option to look at now is the second most played move, c takes b7. And this line pretty much just gives us exactly what we want. I mean, the compensation we have for two sacrificed pawns here are these bishops, and that's just terrifying. Being that your opponent has probably never seen this before, I don't know who in their right mind would accept our gambit all the way to here. But they are up two pawns, so I mean, I guess let's just look at some of the ideas here. First things first, again, second most common move, f takes e5, loses the game. Don't have to go over that. And one thing that is nice to know is that bishop b5 check and knight f3 will usually transpose into the same variation. We'll start with knight f3 since it's more popular, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Here, we're going to play e4 and the majority of people are playing knight to e5. Of course, there are some other moves here though. Um, bishop b5 check is probably gonna transpose into the stuff I'm about to show you. Uh, queen e2 is also usually an idea in these kinds of positions, but there's really nothing to worry about here. You can just play knight to f6, and nothing's really scoring well here. If they start giving checks or something, trying to win a piece this way, uh, there's really nothing to worry about. You can just defend this bishop this way, and keep in mind their knight is still hanging. So if they take your bishop, you can just play something like rook to b8, and after queen a6, now you can take their knight, and that's not going to be fun to deal with. So queen e2 isn't really anything to deal with. Again, there's a lot of moves white can play here, but the most common you're going to see is knight to e5. And then we just respond with knight to f6. And now you can see why I said the bishop b5 lines are probably just going to transpose, because the vast majority of people are playing that move here. White really needs to strike quickly here, because they are up two pawns, but we have a lot of activity. And that is why some non-confrontational moves like knight f3 and bishop to c4, they, they just don't work. You can castle, and according to the engine, it's, it's pretty equal, but practically, this is going to be very hard to deal with. And that is why the absolute best line that white has here is to play bishop to b5 check, trying to keep us from castling, and we play knight b to d7. And once again, they need to be precise here. The most common move, d4, it's minus 2. We just take on passant. If they take back with the queen, we castle. They basically just do not want to let us castle. I mean, just look how nasty things can get from here. The 50% of people are playing knight takes d7, take back with the knight, and now 75% of people are like, well, I'm just going to win your knight, right? Queen to b6, and oh my god. Yeah, I mean, there is literally nothing in the center to protect this king. We have insane pressure on the diagonals. Our rooks are coming to these files. I don't know if I've ever seen a more pathetic king in my life. Now, I can't go over every possible move, like, in this position, because that's just insane. But just know, like, bishop takes d7, it's, it's better for us. Knight c3, uh, the engine is in our favor. And the absolute best way to continue from here is to play a very specific line. Knight takes d7, we take back with our knight, and then most people are finding the move here, queen to g4. They have successfully prevented us from castling, uh, immediately at least, uh, because if we did, we would just straight up lose the knight. However, there is still a lot of play from here. White looks like they're threatening a couple things. They're threatening this, they're threatening this. And so the engine says to just play it cool, play the move queen to c7. Very interesting move. I think the main point of this is that if queen takes g7, uh, adding another pawn, they are now up three pawns, we can cast along and, I mean, Jesus Christ, that, that is some crazy development. So yes, like I said, we are down three pawns here. They can even keep munching and take a fourth pawn, but things aren't going to end up very well for them. And yes, we're down three pawns here, but essentially white is down three pieces here that are just straight up stuck on the back rank. If they try to develop with something like knight to c3, the game is immediately put right back in our favor. 
I mean, I don't know how someone survives a position like this. I mean, maybe Rook F1, and then the engine likes taking this pawn and hanging onto this one, but practically, you can just play something like E3 here, and what exactly are you going to do about this? Uh, you try to develop your bishop, you're fucked. You try to push D3, you're fucked. Yeah, the world is your oyster from here. I, I can't play the whole game for you. So that brings us to what I would consider probably the absolute best line from here, which is after queen to c7, just taking this knight right off the board. We have to take back with their queen, and they have successfully gotten rid of our queens, which is going to make it a lot easier for them to make some kind of advantage out of their extra pawns. However, it is still no walk in the park, and things are still very tricky from here. They are not able to play their d pawn forward at all. If they do, you can take it, and basically, this rook is just hanging. Like, we're going to take this b pawn, and then where's your rook going? So, the only real plan of developing from here is to play something like knight to c3, b3, and bishop to b2. Maybe trying to cast along at some point. However, if they are not careful, they can still lose the game very quickly. After something like knight to c3, we can just get our rooks to some really good files. Something like b3, rook to e1, and then if they play bishop to b7, uh-oh. Let's say they try to ignore our threat and just cast along maybe. Well, now we have e2 and the game's over. This rook has to go to e1 and then bishop takes g2. This rook is trapped. That's it. Even if they manage to find some of the weird engine shit, like knight to a4 here, well now we have e takes d2, and they're not castling first of all, and after king takes we have bishop to e3. We're winning at least one of our pawns back, and the only move is actually king to d3 here. If they go back, it's, it's very bad. After bishop to g2, <laughs> if they try to save their rook, rook to e1, it's mate. These are just some insane fucking lines, guys. And, I mean, it's a totally legit gambit, too. Like, I don't think we ever even got above maybe 1, 1 1.5 as far as the evaluation goes. And, I mean, there's even, like, a massive likelihood that your opponent is going to play E takes F4 at some point and just lose the game. I think there was, like, 7 or 8 different lines where E takes F5 was, like, the second or third most common move. If you are able to just memorize everything in this video and also check out the video FM William Grave made, of course... You might end up with like a 100% win rate against the King's Gambit. I I'm not even kidding. Alright, so we are going back. This is the main Gambit position after we play the move Bishop to C5 instead of Knight takes F6. We've looked at all the main stuff here, which is Knight to F3, C takes B7, and even F takes E5, which just immediately loses. Before I go back one move, I would like to briefly touch on the move Knight to C3. This can be a very tricky move because if you just take on C6, then they can play knight to f3, and we would no longer have this e5 push. And while it is perfectly fine, you're just going to end up getting a kind of more normal uh, Falkbeer counter gambit position. Which is why I would like to suggest the move queen to b6 here. This is like the perfect counter to the knight to c3 line, and these stats are pretty fucking awful. Again, I'm not going to go super deep into this stuff, but these are some very nice lines. For example, the most common move, queen to e2. Alright, we have knight takes c6. Very important to include this move. Uh, this protects our e5 pawn, so the queen cannot take with check. Now, after the most common move, f takes e5, it's lost. We can just win that knight. Uh, th there's nothing they can do. The second most common move here surprisingly does nothing about bishop f2 check. Knight to f3 just allows us to check the king. Uh, I feel like we have plenty of compensation here, but especially after the move knight takes c3. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's kind of insane how high these win rates are for, like, every single fucking line. Nobody has yet found the engine move of knight to a4 here, trying to disconnect the bishop and the knight. I mean, we could just play queen a6 and win the knight. I, I don't see what the problem there is. Every other move here just basically allows us to develop and castle. If f takes e5, I like this very interesting engine move of bishop to d4. It has been found before by multiple people, and this is probably the best outcome they're going to get after that knight f3 move. Now, going back here, after queen to b6, we've looked at queen e2 and knight f3, but you might have seen that third most common move, queen to f3, scores really well for white, right? Well, that's only because half of the players here blundered by taking this knight too quickly. We have to have some kind of defense around our king before we attack like this, and after knight to d5, our queen has a very difficult time hanging onto this bishop and also preventing this check on c7. Not going to be fun to deal with. So, instead of rushing with our attack, we need to play this move knight takes c6 first, and from here we have very good chances of winning the game. The only way for white to hang on here is to play the move knight to a4. This bishop is just too powerful right now, and they really need to trade it off. And if that happens, 
I'm sorry, there's only been two games to ever get to this position, so if you end up with an equal position, I'm fucking sorry. However, if they do pretty much anything other than that, they're going to lose the game. For example, uh, making some random move on this side of the board, that is actually going to hang this knight now, because after knight to d5, we have a beautiful resource, knight to d4. After all the trades, you should end up at least up a piece, so you can thank me later. And if they play the most popular move in this position, knight to e2, just getting rid of that threat entirely, well, now, now, now we can have some fun. Knight to b4. Okay, okay, what do they got? They got king to d1. I think that's the only move. All right, so now bishop to f5. Now, we just want to do it anyways. Obviously, d3, d3, right? And then knight to f6. If they play something to encourage that, something like f takes c5, well, knight to g4. Knight to g4, this bishop is hanging, but if they take it, they lose. Knight f2 check, and just, just have fun. I'll put it this way. Top engine move is to take this with their queen, so it's bad. And so last but not least, let's say your opponent doesn't want to take this because of knight to g4, and they want to play something like h3. Stop you from playing knight to g4. It's lost, again. Once again, a very rare position. I don't think you're ever going to actually find this in a game, but it's a fun exercise to kind of look at the ideas here. After e4, they can't do much. Uh, let's say they take with their pawn. Castle's long. Castle's long, okay. If they move their king, it's mate in one. So, they should play something like Engine says knight to d4. What about bishop to d2? Engine says rook takes d2 with some wild ideas. All right, so knight takes e4. All right, what if knight takes? We got rook d8 check. Okay, knight d4 is still top engine move. Uh, King, do you want? Oh, mate. Oh, I see. It's mate. I haven't looked at these particular lines beforehand, so I'm kind of experiencing this with you. But, like, imagine getting a line like this in, a, like, an over-the-board event. That would be fucking insane. Alright, so let's go back a little bit. Let's say white doesn't capture our c-pawn, and they also don't capture our e-pawn. The most common move, other than those two, is going to be knight to f3 now. And even here, we have some pretty fun ways to continue the game. Of course, we're going to push e4, and the majority of people are going to e5. Now, the engine move and the most common move is c takes d5, but... I like this move that's played 6% of the time, knight f6, with the same trap we've seen a couple times before. By far the most common response and the top engine move is to take our c-pawn. We take back with the knight, and now there's a couple ways for white to lose the game. A lot of these variations are going to look very similar, uh, if not just a straight transposition to some of the other positions we looked at earlier. The most common move here is bishop to b5, with this threat of taking, taking, and then winning this rook. But if you remember our lines from earlier, at the end of all that, bishop to g4 is going to trap the queen. I absolutely love these moves here. Just bishop to c5. An amazing, beautiful developing move. By far most people are falling directly into this trap. And very similarly to the other positions as well, after bishop c4, we just play bishop c5. We don't care about our f-pawn at all. They can take it with the knight or the bishop, doesn't really matter. Bishop takes, we just play king f8. We're attacking the bishop, so if if they do nothing, we're going to take this knight, and then we're going to take the bishop. Which is why bishop to b3 is the most common move, after which knight takes e5, pawn takes, and bishop to g4 traps the queen. And of course, if knight takes, I, I think this is a direct transposition from the stuff I looked at earlier. Uh, engine likes queen d4, but actually it likes queen b6 even more. I would imagine most people are going to take this rook, and then after bishop to g4... I don't see many people giving their queen up here. Everybody's going to play this move, bishop to e2, but but then they lost really bad. And just a final little note, after the immediate knight f3, without taking on c6, if they play really any other move, queen e2, knight g5, knight to d4, generally c takes d5 is just going to be a perfectly fine move. We are not even down any material in this position. We have a great center. We're going to be developing like this. It's going to be easy as shit. Castle... Great game. No, nothing to complain about here at all. And last but certainly not least, I'm going to check out the move knight to f3 in this position. This is the second most common move in the position, and at least according to this little Lee chess engine, it is the best move. We are going to play the obvious move, d takes e4, and then 93% of people are taking this pawn on e5. Not going to look at any other moves. I'm going to go with the engine recommendation of bishop to d6, and believe it or not, there's a couple ways that white can actually lose the game immediately here. 
Bishop to c4 is the most common move here, attacking this f7 pawn. The engine recommends playing knight to h6, just protecting it, and at the moment there's no way to dislodge this knight. And to my surprise, the most common move in the position, played 52% of the time, castles, is minus 5. We just straight up win a bishop. We're going to take this knight, they take back, and queen d4. Straight up fork. Other than that, white can kind of play some other moves here. A queen h5 does not score very well. You can just castle and you're perfectly fine. And on top of that, a large percent of your opponents are going to castle here and fall for a very similar trap where we can take the knight and 63% of people are taking this with the pawn. And now the move, queen d4 does win, but bishop to g4 traps the queen. Now there are a few lines that could have happened after the immediate knight to f3 before taking on d5 that pretty much every other video on the Falkbeer counter gambit has covered already. But these were really the only two traps I could find from there and I just wanted to make sure you were aware of them. So if you want to learn some real chess, unfortunately you're probably going to have to go to someone else's channel. Alright, so that is going to conclude my video on how to destroy the king's gambit using the pickler gambit. Again, for more on this gambit, check out FM William Grace's video. I don't think he went quite as in-depth as I did, but he does show some lines that I did not get into in this video. If you enjoy this kind of content, please like, comment, subscribe, go fuck yourself, all that shit. If you made it to the end of this video, I want to reward you with just a little bit of knowledge about my next upcoming video. That one is going to be a full breakdown on how to gambit against the fucking London. I know, I didn't think it was possible either, but FM William Grave, once again, coming in clutch, providing us with the London Crusher 9000 and the NV Gambit. Two incredibly powerful weapons against the London that make me absolutely pray for a London system every single time I see D4. And also, I have finally got a webcam, so next video is going to be face reveal. I should clarify, I'm going to have a face cam in the London video, not making a whole video on just a face reveal. So if that sounds interesting to you, let me know down in the comments. Ask to play a game sometime. You know, I, I wouldn't even mind some daily games with some of my subs. That sounds actually kind of fun. But yeah, that's going to be it for today. See you next time. Oh, and make sure that you always remember. If you drink Bud Light, you are a homosexual.